it's, it's like this in any business, I guess, probably beside like a publicly held company where they have a board of directors, but any business that's owned by one human being, that guy at any moment, and I'm sure people listening work for a, a company where, especially if it's a, you know, a, not like a Fortune 500 company, where there's a human being that owns it. And if something really needs to be said, that guy can, or girl or woman, can come in and sit whoever down. That could be their president. That could be the head of sales. That could be a group of people that just, if something's getting weird or something gets out of control, Tito Beverage can walk in and sit down or zoom in with an employee and just have a conversation from a, from a position of power. And if you look around the league, and right or wrong, like Jerry Jones, Robert Kraft, John Marr, and I'm not saying these guys can like, they necessarily like have a could tell you what to do football wise, but just have a human to human conversation as I'm your boss, I sign the check. The 49ers do not have that. Like, I'm not saying Jed can't call to have a conversation with Kyle, but th- there's no way if I was in Kyle's shoes, I'm looking at Jed like you can tell me fucking anything. And I'm not saying that he would be disrespectful, Harbaugh style. I'm just saying, like, and I don't even think Jed would do that, but like the Niners do not have that. Now, they do have John Lynch. And this is where I think it's a tough situation. That, like, John ultimately works for Kyle. And guys talk about this all the time, how a GM and a head coach are together. Well, they are, but one guy hired the other guy in every building, right? In, go to Seattle, Pete hired John. You go to Kansas City, Andy hired Veach. You go to, you know, it worked out a little weird in L.A. is like, Les need kind of hired McVay, but clearly McVay is in charge now. Kyle is in charge, even though, like, if they got into a fist fight, like I said, or on the football field, John Lynch would kick his ass. But this is, this is a real, you know, a, a corporate vibe when you're, even if you are a GM and head coach, you're never going to fight. But it's a tough spot for John, even as, like, the guy that's known as, like, Captain America, this great leader, to really kind of sit down and maybe, and I don't even know, like, what the issue would be, but, like, quote-unquote, get in his ass. Because you hear a lot of this with head coaches, Nick Saban, like in co- the college guys and, and the pro guys. They can get in people's ass, right? If something needs to be handled, the head coach will sit a guy down and light him up. Is there someone that can, and when I say light him up, I don't mean screaming at him, but like have a conversation. Does that guy exist? And to me, the only guy that exists, it ain't Jed. It would only be John. And I think it's a tough spot for John. You know what I wonder? Is that what Kyle now is? is does Kyle need that? But don't we? What don't we? No, no, all no, no, no. Hold on. You're not, let me finish. No, no, no. Let me finish. I'm not saying Kyle doesn't need someone to talk to him. I'm saying Kyle is the guy that's in his own ass all the time. Like maybe that's what you were getting at earlier with Sala. That Kyle doesn't need someone to yell at him. He needs somebody to get just to shake him, but in a different, just to give him a, something different than what he's got. What he's got seems to be misery pretty consistently right and the more they lose the more miserable he gets yeah and you're right like i the the boss doesn't always yell at the person whose sales numbers are down right yeah but they know how to get to them in a way to get their best out of them whatever that is and then john i think is the only guy possible i think yeah he's the only guy that can that that it would meet that whatever button he can find, he the cop would let him flip it in. And he has right. has the credibility because again, back to Jed. Jed just does not have the credibility beside the wealth that was given to him by his family to say anything football wise or leadership wise to Kyle. <laughs> Where John does, he has been a team captain on Super Bowl teams. He clearly plays a big role leading just the 49ers operation. The respect, I think, the players on the team that respect John. And again, it's not John's job to like talk to those. It's a weird spot as a GM, right? He, they, he is not the messenger to the team. That is Kyle and the coach's jobs. But sometimes I do think a coach, like you said, just needs help. It was always what we talked about like with John Gruden or whatever. Like, who's there to help him? Like, and, and he's not listening to anybody. And that's where I do think Kyle can fall into that mode. Like, I'm the boss. I'm the richest guy here. I'm the most accomplished guy here. Who, who the fuck's telling me anything? It, to me, it's only John is the only guy that has that capability. And, and back but to what I'm saying, I, about, I do believe it's a tough spot to be 
You know, it, it's a yeah, delicate but, spot. But it's not just about like motivating him, right? It's about help. Who else can help him find the solutions that he needs to find? Yeah, that's what the thing about. And football. maybe that's where John was You're helping. Not getting right? in early enough. <laughs> well, look, if John Lynch was the one that said like, "Hey, man, we you should draft Trey Lance." And Trey Lance is the solution. Then that, it, like, that's part of it. Some of these things can't happen like Sunday night over T or Tito's. Some of it is like big picture things. Like, if he got him to draft a quarterback that he would not have otherwise drafted, then that is part of what you're talking about here. I was going to look up McCorkle's numbers today. I don't think they're uh, that great. McCorkle's despite got his... like as many picks as he has touchdowns. So people need to chill on McCorkle. Yeah. I McCorkle is doing a good job. 24-36, like 302 touchdowns. Yeah, he, they, they played the Jets. He's doing a good job. They played the Jets, yeah. He's doing a good job. I He is the best. Well, I, Kendrick I, Bourne threw a touchdown today. Kendrick Bourne did throw a touchdown today to Nelson Aguilar. There were a few. Those sweet play. Yeah. How about the Vita Vea running back high school highlights? Um, did I didn't you see, see those? That. No. They had high school highlights of Vita Vea playing running back, and he looks like Vita Vea. But, um, Anyone tackle him? No. Touchdowns. <laughs> Uh, but you know, look, Mac Jones is playing well. You wouldn't take Mac Jones over all the other rookies, but you might take him over a couple of them at this, at this point right here in this moment. I don't know that he does the things that the Niners need though. He needs somebody to push the ball down the field. Yeah. I, you know, so it doesn't solve that problem, but, but I, I think your point's a good one. It's, it's, it's sometimes you just, it happens to everybody. Like you go down a rabbit hole and you need somebody to help. Everyone needs somebody in their life that can help or somebody's in their life that can help them when they're struggling. And can that be an assistant coach? Sure. Can it be uh, Mike Shanahan? Sure. But it, it, it helps to be somebody of a high level that can speak to the pressure. Kyle's under a unique amount of pressure. Even he said after the game, like we've lost four in a row. I should be getting, I should be getting criticized. It's fair. He said that he said that. Yep. What do you think about bringing Mike back and moving him to the offensive coordinator? Is it too soon? Moving who off offensive coordinator. Kyle. Kyle, and let Mike just run around and yell at people? Well, yeah, Kyle, or Mike just focuses on timeouts and screaming at the referees. He does, And just the occasional, you know, motivational speech. Do you know what Mike was really good at? Like, he ran a tight ship. Remember Albert Hainsworth when he got to the football team? And Albert was out of shape, and he, like, made him run gassers. And him and Albert were, like, at odds. And Albert was this huge guy, and Mike's this little guy. And Mike was not scared at all. So one thing Mike had, Mike was, and you had to be this way to coach in the 80s and 90s, because back then, like I said today, there were no fights. I, I do think there were more likely to be a fight, like coach, player, even these crazy little guys like Shanahan. You had to be ready, even though you would lose. Mike Shanahan's fucking nuts, right? Because you had to be to survive in the 80s and 90s in the league. And I'm not saying Kyle's not. Kyle's just new age nuts. But, like, I, I do think they need somewhere where everyone's kind of on their toes, you know? And I, I don't think they have that right now. I, I, I really don't. They, they just... And there are different ways to do it, right? There, there, are, there is. And 2021 is not 1989. It's not Walsh and Singletary and, you know, and Parcells. And, you know, so obviously Singletary was a player. But you know what I mean. Just it, it's different. But, you know, it just the, – the offense just feels very disjointed. And it just feels very – something just feels very off. And, uh, and it goes I back think- to when, when, you, when you were that in control. And I, I, was, I was as critical – as anyone that talk is consistently about Gruden, because I'm like, well, if, if Gruden's team is not like, it is all on him. I, I do think it's fair to say like, this is all on Kyle. Like how many coaches beside like some of the older, like Matt, you know, uh, Andy Reid or Belichick, but all the new age guys, not many of them like LaFleur and McVay in their tenure have not had as much juice as Kyle. Like Kyle's juice, the moment he got here, was immediately like Andy Reid level, Sean Payton level, right? From day one. And it's like, well, now, you know, when shit starts hitting the fan a little bit, after you've established yourself and your team, I, I can't just go, well, it's all these other things. Like it does, you know, it, it, it does, it falls under his umbrella. Yeah. I mean, remember the story he told on the Sean McVay podcast was basically, there was no way I was taking that job, but then I took the job, <laughs> right? Like, I wasn't taking that job. They don't have a quarterback. They're bad. Like, I'm not taking the Niner job. But then I met with them, and I took the job, basically. Remember, they gave him six and, years. Right. And, and he's like, and, wait, and, Jed, you leave me alone? He's like, yeah, you do it if well, you want. That's the point, is they just he, – they, he took a job he wasn't going to take. Now, he says, you know, I do believe 
I don't think he he wouldn't have taken a job for a six year contract just for the six year contract if he wasn't convinced. They convinced him, but part of that convincing was telling him like we are not we are not going to be in your way. We're going to give you whatever you need, which was not the case for what I'm saying. Like with Lafleur and McVeigh, who are two guys that are killing it right now. Like Lafleur, no one was offering him the job, and he's like, "Wait, the Green Bay Packers with Aaron Rodgers offering me the job? Like he had to take it." Sean McVay, when he got offered the job, people were like, "What? Who is right. this little guy?" Kyle right. was was like, "Yeah, we'll just give you the here's the keys. You mean to the the Forty ers Yeah, to the San Francisco Forty ers Here are the keys. You do whatever the fuck you want. You want to bring uh, that guy calling games with Kevin Burkhart? Bring him on in too. That, that <laughs> called you like a week ago. <laughs> Come on down. <laughs> you know." He was given a lot of juice for, like, Mark Mark gave John Gruden a lot of juice, but John had all these offers. Like, John was getting that juice. Like, Kyle, there is no guarantee that he would have had that juice everywhere he went. Like, if he would have been the New York Giants head coach, you know, I don't know if he just could have walked all over and done whatever he wanted, right? Is my point. Right. Like, th- back to what I'm saying, everything that happens on the field is a Kyle Shanahan thing. Good I- and bad. Josh Dubow took a break from tweeting about Raiders to say, I'm kidding, uh, to say out of 113 coaches who have 70 plus games with one franchise since the merger, Kyle Shanahan's 443 winning percentage ranks 101st. So 113 coaches, 70 plus games, one franchise since the merger, which was whatever year that was, 1963. I don't know. Uh, 443 is uh, 101 out of 113. Not going well, man. Eric Popper would know what year the merger was. I think the merger was 1970. 66? Uh, It was announced in 66. They merged in 70. Yeah. Because the Super Bowl is... They did the the joint AFL-NFL thing for a few years. 